fit for the season that we're going through, Lord. Lord, give us a word today that will strengthen us and comfort us and lift us up. Father, even as your word is going forth today, Lord, let us see things in your word that we might have overlooked or misunderstood. And Lord, we also pray that you'll add on to that which we do know and understand. Father, as we look into your word, let us see and behold mighty things out of your word today, Lord. The Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. And Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming in to help me to feed and teach your people today. And give them a word that will be fitting to the season, Lord. And Lord, let the word go forth and stir us up allow us to be living and active in the kingdom of God. Father, let us not just hear your word, but let us be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. How many of y'all were blessed today? Amen. How many of y'all would like to see him again? Amen. Brother Chris? Man, you really blessed us today. You really blessed us today. This is a young man I've been trying to get him here for a while, but God's timing is perfect. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand for the position. Man, do you really know how to worship and praise? Not only that, this brother can preach. Powerful, anointed preacher. Amen. Look at you, David, say, God is hooking us up. God is hooking us up. The north, the south, the east, and the west. God is bringing us together and hooking us up. Amen. He's telling y'all, God is doing something special. And he's always bringing people into your path that will help you to go to that next level. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long. I wanna, how far away are you from your home um, next up here? 20 minutes? Okay, I'm going to start right there. If I start at 30, I mean, 11.35, you'd be good? All righty, all righty. But uh, when we were ministering, the Lord was uh, in the Word just now. The Lord was saying, "We, I'm going to get you over here, brother. And we ain't going to do no preaching. We're going to do a lot of praise and worship. That's what the Lord just put on my spirit. A whole <laughs> service, hour, two hours. However, we want to get just worship because, see, Lord has promised... We're going to be a night of a revival right here. Praise and worship calls you to let go and just open it up so God can just minister to you. Amen. I think we got the right connection now to worship with you. Ain't nothing like laugh music. Keep praying that God will make a way for us to get him here more often. Amen. I know he's busy, but um, we claiming him when we need him. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Brother Chris. Wow. I keep I kept bumping into this young man. I met him in two thousand eight. And uh, even though we moved to Quincy, bumped into him time and time again there and now we in Crawfordville, he lives in South Chopping. Bump into each other in the grocery store. And then uh, Pastor Payne come to find out when the when the Pastor Payne church to support him and Brother Chris they're playing. It's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> and so, God had, knows how to hook us up. Can I get amen? Amen. Amen. Is he one of them Thessalonians? Thessalonians? Yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thessalonians, what do you mean? Is it the group? Oh, okay, okay. Thessalonians, yes. <laughs> Didn't know that Christian would tell me the name, but I must have forgot. <laughs> but anyway, let's turn to our Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter 11, listing, I think it's verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Not going to be before you long. I, um, I don't want to hold Brother Chris up because we need to get him out to be able to um, 
get his equipment out of here so he can go to the next event, amen. But I'm pretty sure, boy, when we get him back the next time, we're going to have an awesome time in the Word. It's just the Word is just going to minister to us. So y'all come, when you come, be, put your shower shoes on, amen. And just be ready. Ready. I know I am, Chris. I'm going to be ready. I don't find me a worshiper now. I know we can always do it, but man, wow. They could just let go. Let God come in. It's not hard to preach behind that, is it? Um, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Let's, when you get there, say amen. I'm coming out of, um, I got the New Living Translation. Pretty much what I do all the time. But I like the King James too. I don't have anything against the other version. But I like, I like to just use um, different versions to kind of make the uh, point clear. Um... Oh, is everybody there? Matthew 28. I'm still reeling from the praise and worship, y'all. I'm just, man, done some to us, brother. He got us ready for his worshiping. So Matthew 11, 28, it says, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and let me teach you. Because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you, you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy yes. to bear. And my burden. And the burden I give you is light. I pray to you Matthew chapter 28. I'm sorry, Matthew 11, 28-30. May God bless the hearers of his word. Tonight I want to continue to um, preach about getting to know the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Chief. Amen. Getting to know the Holy Spirit. How many of you want to continue to get Amen. to know the Holy Spirit? Amen. And the purpose of getting to know the Holy Spirit is so that we can all have an intimate relationship with God. But right. we want an intimate relationship with God, but it's for a purpose. Amen. Amen. It's not just about getting full of the Word and full of the Holy Spirit. But God wants us to have an intimate relationship with Him for a purpose. And as we started the series out, we remember Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? And He never, he never took that assignment back. The only difference is, is that He's in heaven now, directing us through the Holy Spirit. And He still wants us to go forth into all of the world and preach the gospel. By the different methods that we have today. Internet, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, all of these different methods. But the thing we said about it was kind of scary when Jesus kept telling the disciples, He said, It's much needful that you that I go away so that a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, will come. And one of the things that they were used to, Jesus teaching them in the flesh. And so God is still teaching us, but He's teaching us through His Spirit. Which is the Holy Spirit. And so when I said, take my, I read the scripture, take my yoke and learn upon me. The same thing is going on in the spirit. Jesus wants us to take the Holy Spirit upon us and learn from him in the spirit today through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't get familiar with the Holy Spirit, we'll never carry out the plans and purpose in our lives that God wants for us. Amen. And as we said last week, um, God will never allow us to be a part of kingdom business without a blessing being for us. Amen? Amen. And so many times when in Matthew we see it says, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But a lot of times, you know, in the world I have to break it down, break it down. A lot of people be saying, like, if I'm in the kingdom all the time, when will I have time for God? Or when will I be blessed? That's human nature, like we talked about last week. But if you read Matthew 6.33 and you look at it very carefully, not only did, did he give us a kingdom assignment, but he also, in that Matthew 6.33, and he said, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all in, in his righteousness and all these things will be added. While you are walking forth and doing what the kingdom wants you to do, you're going to be blessed. 
Amen. 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 As we're doing, tell your neighbor, as you're doing kingdom business, God is blessing you. Amen. Blessing. Good illustration we have today. As this young man is doing kingdom business, God is blessing him not only to be a blessing to us and sing songs that will help us to get into the presence of God, but at the same time, musicians get paid. Amen. 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 So your, his blessing is taking care of his need. What if he got out of the will of God and would be doing something else? He wouldn't be blessed. Right. Amen. A lot of times we look around and we wonder why we are not blessed abundantly. It's because we're not walking in the purpose that God wants us to get That's right. walk That's in. Right. That's right. See, we, we got to remember that as we're doing kingdom business, God has given us, us an anointing to bless us and help take care of all of our needs. Amen. As we're carrying out kingdom business. Amen. Amen. So I have to say that because a lot of times people think when you're just working for God, there, there's no blessing in it for you. But it is. Amen. Amen. And so, if we're going to get to know the Holy Spirit, you got to get self out of the way. That's right. He said, take Amen. my yoke Amen. upon you and learn from me. It's a process. And today I want to just talk about, give a couple of illustrations in the Old Testament where you'll never do anything for God without the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life. You'll never do anything great for God. Because the assignment that God has given to us is too great for us to carry out in our natural strength. Can I get amen? amen? Amen. He made it that way so that we will need Him. Because if you were able to carry it out in your own strength, you'd be saying what I did. That's right. I did this. Right. Amen. Amen. And so, I can't think of a better person in Scripture as an example than David. Can we get amen? Amen. Let's go to First Samuel chapter. Um, it's very interesting uh, about David's life. I'm skipping over some scriptures because I want to get my brother out of time on time. First Corinthians. I'm sorry. First Samuel 13 and 14. We go in here because look what the Lord said about David. Look what the Lord said about David. How many of y'all want to do some great things for the Lord? Amen. amen. Well, if you're going to do some great things. For the Lord, you need the Holy Spirit in your life to lead you and to guide you and to direct you in every area of your life. Paul had to find that out when God told him, my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. See, we got to realize this assignment that God has given to us, we have demonic opposition coming against us all the time. Amen. As verse later was saying today, that when God takes you to another level, your assignment, the enemy... Uh, comes after you even more because the devil's job is to never allow the kingdom of God to manifest Amen. in this earth realm. Amen. 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 And so Paul said it another way in 6 Corinthians, I mean Ephesians 6, 12, when he was there, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. I said all that to say this, too many people in the body of Christ is trying to do this in their own strength. Amen. When you try to do it in your own strength, you're going to get weary, you're going to get tired, you're going to give up. So you got to learn to what? Have an intimate relationship with God so you can take His yoke upon you let, and let Him teach you. Let Him lead you. Let Him guide you in every area of your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, so that you will not waste time. See, if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in our purpose, and the purpose God has for us, we're going to waste a whole lot of time. Can we get amen? Amen. So the Lord in the Old Testament, the, the Holy Spirit came upon the men God chose right. and the women God chose. But see, we have a unique advantage over them today. See, the Holy Spirit would only come upon them, but He would go after they served God. Oh God. But today, the Holy Spirit lives in us, in us. all the time. Amen. amen. We can call Him day or night. Anytime. That's right. And he lives in us and he walks in us and he talks with us just like Jesus did when he was in the flesh. That he talked with the disciples that he was available to them. But the Old Testament, he would only come upon them for, the, for them to do special service and then he would leave. So David is a type and a shadow of things to come. David is a type and shadow of of what the Holy Spirit would come and rest upon us and live in us. He is a, he's a type of the, what you can do in the anointing if you allow the Holy Spirit to what leads you and guide you. 
and I don't have enough time today, I'll pick it up next week. We're going to look at all the principles in David's life that made him successful. And every one of them can be take traced back to the Holy Spirit. Can I get amen? Because amen. he led, he allowed the Holy Spirit to lead him and guide his life perfectly. And therefore he was blessed. He never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. Because he was what? He was an Old Testament type of someone who allows the Holy Spirit to lead and guide their life. We need the Holy Spirit, y'all. Amen. See, God has promised all of us in here, all of us in here have purpose and gifts and talents and abilities, but we'll never pull this thing off if we get off course. And we have to spend time in the Holy Spirit, in His presence, getting guidance and getting instructions. So that we can carry out God's plan. Tell your neighbor, it's not about me. It's not about me anymore. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about the Holy Spirit. Now look what the Lord said about David in 1 Samuel 13. You see, the Lord had to get rid of Saul because Saul started wanting to do things his way. Tell your neighbor, I'm not, I don't want to be replaced. I don't want to be replaced. Hey, see, you can't tell your neighbor you can be replaced. You can be replaced. <laughs> See, you are special and you are unique, but if you get out of the will of God, God will just have to find somebody else. They may not be able to do it as good as you did because you're special, you're unique, and you got a, a skill set like nobody else. But God will get the job done. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Saul is an example of somebody. You see, like, like if you do some research, David sinned way more than Saul, but Saul didn't have a heart for God. If David sinned, he cried out to the Lord, Lord, forgive me. And he knew that what his heart was right, though he made mistakes. Saul, made, Saul did things, and he, he really didn't care about really what the anointing on his life. He, he, he got to a point where he thought he could just walk in his own power. He started doing the preacher's job because the preacher was late. He thought the preacher was late. He got in trouble about that. Look what he said. But now your dynasty must end, for the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. The Lord has what? Already chosen him to be king over his people. For you have not obeyed the Lord's command. That's a terrible thing to be fired and left on the job. You know. A, the Lord was showing me there's a lot of ministers and apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers, and I don't mean it in a disparaging way, but they've been fired and left on the job. Because what? They've gotten out of the will of God. My God. Jesus. I was in Lake City and I seen a sign. Man, God knows how to talk to you even through signs. I'm yes. like, I was a little aggravated, like I'm like, Lord, man, why don't these preachers speaking up and and, and preaching the word and well, why, why, why? Next thing you know, I look at a sign that says, those who uh, obey the Lord of God, the voice of God will become a voice for God. Wow. Look how God aligned me up with that marquee in the country. Those who obey the voice of God will become a voice for God. And I said, well, Lord, what does that say? I'm going to be replacing some people. I'm going to be doing... Replacing some people who had a chance and an opportunity. Yeah, I gave them a big platform. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But after they got that platform a while, I sent people to them to try to tell them, you of course, man. Go back to the foundational teachings like what she was saying. Go back to the things of God. Go back to the first love. Go back to what I told you to preach. Go back to what I told you to teach. Thank you, Lord. But no, you're worried about the people. You're worried about the crowds. Come on. You're worried about the signs. Thank you, Jesus. So God is raising up men and women after his heart who will obey him perfectly. Thank you, Lord. So when it says God found someone after his heart, say, Lord, you found me today, too. Lord, Lord, Lord you found me today, too. Say, Lord, you found me. Found, you found me. Found me. Here I am, Lord. Here, Here I am. Here I am. Hallelujah. You found me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord has found us today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And so, 
When it said a person after his heart, that's another way of saying a person who is willing, willing. to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes, God. If you're going to be a person after God's heart, you have to be willing to be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Or you too may be fired and left on the job. Yeah. You're still in a position and look like you look like you're in the position, but there's nothing happening. The anointing is left. Don't let that be said about us, say man. I don't want that to be said about me. Give me five more minutes. For the sake of time, let's look at one of the um the principles in David's life. Let's look at one of the principles in a in a person's life who is after God's heart. A person who's led by the Spirit. Number one, the Spirit of the Lord was upon David. Let's go to um, let's stand um 1 Samuel 16, 13. If you're right, you can write this principle down. The Spirit of the Lord was upon David. So, when it says the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, that means you have been anointed for service. But you also have to grow in that anointing. Tell your name, you have to grow in your anointing. You got to grow in your anointing. See, I'm not where I used to be when I started. Thank God. But I thank God that He's constantly allowing me to grow in the Spirit as I obey the Holy Spirit. Look what it said about David. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the olive oil and he poured and, and, and he brought and poured it on David's head. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him from that day. On then Samuel. Now, if you look at that verse real careful, notice. Now, this this represents you too as an individual. The moment you gave your life to Jesus Christ, that that all represents the Holy Spirit in the New Testament coming upon you. The moment you gave your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit came and lived on the inside of you. And so now we are anointed for service. But it's the the the, the anointing is progressive. It said. It came upon him from that day forward. Notice he didn't just get in the position of, of, of being a king, though he was anointed to be a king. He was anointed but not yet appointed. My God. In other words, he had to grow. He tell you, you got to grow in your gift. You got to grow in your gift. See, see, Pastor Chris can come up here and, and prophesy with a lot of us. Sometimes you're going to be a, he can tell you you're going to be a prophet and you want to be a prophet by tomorrow. Mm. Come on. You have to grow in it. That's right. Tell you, you have to grow in your gift. That's you have to grow in, in your anointing. So during your time of growing in your anointing, David, by him being a man after God's heart, he went back to taking care of sheep. He kind of like me, what's going to be, going to be. I went back to just, you got to keep on working in your secular job. Be patient. Tell you, David, be patient. Be patient. So he went right on back, taking care of them sheep. Though he had the anointing, he didn't let it go to his head. Went right on back, taking care of those sheep. And so we see we have to be like David. We have to allow the anointing to grow in our lives. And whatever God has told you to do, just keep doing what you're doing. And he'll keep elevating you. He knows how to put you in the right position at the right time. I believe that's why God, when he... When he tells you what your end going to be. He don't show y'all everything in life because sometimes we want to give up. Because if the Lord had showed me what all I had to do to do this church, I probably would have gave up. <laughs> so it's good that you, 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 you know, just go back and do what you're doing and just meditate upon the anointing on your life and keep moving on. Don't get caught up in it. Be like David. And notice the Lord calling him up. When the Lord called him up, what was he doing? Working. He had a secular job. Just like me. Full time, secular job. Went right on back to work. Because see, God was trusting in him what? In the small things first. If God can't trust you in a, on a secular job, how can he trust you with something spiritual? That's yes, right. Something great. He said, those who are faithful in a few things, I'll make him what? A ruler over much. Yes. So in, in the process, David, he had the anointing on his life. And the good thing about it, the anointing on your life, you ought to get used to the anointing on your life. In other words, the anointing on your life, you should 
grow with it. Understand how to use it more effectively. Because your anointing on your life can it, can, it can build up, it can tear down, it can destroy. If you mishandle the anointing. Can I get amen? amen? So David, as he went back to being a shepherd, he fought a lion and a bear. And y'all know he could have did that in his own power. Amen. But it was preparing him for Goliath. You know, it's just like if you if you get a weapon, you need to practice with that weapon a while. That's the same thing with anointing. You get to get to know your anointing. Get to, to know what you can do. See, I had to when when the Lord called me to preach and teach. I had to I had to uh, I had to grow in this anointing. I had to learn how what to do and what not to do to cause the Holy Spirit to flow through me. Because a lot of times when God calls us, we're trying to operate in somebody else's anointing, uh -oh. Uh -huh. the way somebody else. That's been doing it. He said to realize that I couldn't. I see there's a teaching and a preaching anointing on me at times. So I had to realize that I didn't have a hooter's anointing. To be able to hoot. Because if I would have tried to flow in that, I would look silly. Amen. And we saw that David was. He knew what he would work for him. By him spending time with the Lord. And with his anointing. I wonder if you understand what, how to deal with your anointing. I wonder if you know what triggers the flow of God in your life. I wonder if you understand what caused the anointing to just come out of you. I wonder if you've been working on your anointing to see how you flow. See, in my anointing, I have to... I have to read and read the word and then I feel the spirit coming on. Or I have to be outside, then I hear the spirit coming on. I have to, the outside relaxes me and then I begin to hear God's voice. For some people like him probably, we, when he wants the anointing to come in when he's prepared to serve, maybe you have to go and play for a little while. You have to know what caused you to flow. You have to know. So I had to, I experienced some different things, and so I, I realized when I had, just like my notes, when I notes, I have to just put, jot one thing down to trigger everything God told me, so I can just put one word down, remember, oh, come back to my members like that. And people would say, you remember all this stuff? No, one word can trigger what God told me, so I learned to put one word down when I'm preaching. You know, go back and trigger everything else God wants to say to y'all. So you have to know, you have to be, you have to, Work on your anointing to see what causes you to release your anointing. Let me get one more. All right, now, the next principle was operating in his life as he began to um, work through the Holy Spirit. Notice it said the Holy Spirit was looking for someone whose heart was right toward God. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, remember the prophet Samuel, he was looking for somebody that looked like the last king, Saul. But see, God looks at our heart. See, a lot of times we overlook people because we're looking for the anointing to be in a certain type of looking vessel. So God told the prophet Samuel, don't look at the outward part. Because I look at the inner part. I wonder, as you see, that's why we have to be led by the Spirit because we can overlook some people. The very people that you need to help you get to the next level, you can overlook them. See, they saw a little small shepherd boy, but God saw the next king. Next king, next ruler. Next ruler. Thank next you. I wonder what God sees when he looks at you. <laughs> that people have overlooked. See, the Bible says in the New Living Translation said that David was a little ruddy, dark complexion fellow. And uh, they was like, no, nah, no, nah, that's, that's not what we're looking for. But how many of you know it's all about God anyway? Mm -hmm. See, the power comes from God. Don't look at what you look like. Don't look like. Don't look at your abilities. God can add on to that. Your abilities and your talent, but the power of the Holy Spirit can work awesome things. Mm -hmm. David destroyed Goliath with what? The power of the Lord. And I'm gonna close here. 
Um, notice when he went to fight Goliath, what did he choose? Five stones. Five stones, Pastor Chris. He had five stones. He went up against Goliath with five stones. I looked at that verse a lot of times, Pastor Chris. And you know what? The Holy Spirit brought to my mind. I said, Lord, why do you need five? The Lord said, that five represents what? The grace of God. See, you're going to destroy things by the grace of God is on your life, which is called the anointing. And that's another way of looking at in the New Testament calls what my grace is sufficient. He just needed the grace of God to defeat Goliath. And that's all we need. The Holy Spirit, which is our grace. See, the Holy Spirit is also our grace. See, grace means what? The ability to do what you can't do in your own strength also. So all we need is to constantly be led and guided by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our grace card to do what we cannot do in our own strength. Let us stand to our feet. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your word. For Lord, we know your word has gone forth and it shall not return unto you, Lord, but it will accomplish everything that you sent it out to do. And Lord, as we leave this place, but never from your purpose, allow your word to continue to work in our hearts and our minds. Because you declared in your word that your word is living and it's active and it's powerful, Lord. And as we leave here, Lord, and go into the marketplace, Lord, continue to bless us and put us in a position, Lord, to meet the people that you have in store for us to meet today. So that we can give them a word that will strengthen them and comfort them and lift them up. Yes. And Lord, you also said in your word that iron sharpen iron. Let them give us a word that will lift us up, strengthen us, and comfort us, Lord. And Father, we pray for the grace of God to be mightily upon us, Lord. Cause your face to shine upon us. Be merciful to us, Lord. So Lord, we thank you again and we praise you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.